discuss the flashcard of a patient with a GBS and how would we manage when a, a pregnant lady with a GBS comes for management. Okay, so uh, basically you have to follow this flow chart. If you memorize this flow chart by heart, it would be very easy for you to solve different so uh, sort of MCQs related to the GBS. Okay, so a pregnant lady, you can see on the right hand side that if she comes for cesarean section, she is not in labor and membranes are intact. Now, uh, uh, regardless of the GBS carrier status, whether she has got GBS or not, you, you don't have to give uh, IAP. Um, there is no need of intrabartum antibiotic prophylaxis. But if that patient, uh, pregnant lady, comes with GBS bacteriuria in the current pregnancy, okay, uh, so in that case, we have to offer uh, her IAP. An oral antibiotic, if proven, GBS UTI. If we have proven GBS UTI, then we have to offer that. If she comes in the pregnancy, means uh, we're not planning cesarean section here. Okay, so uh, then if we are planning vaginal delivery, okay, what we have to do in that case, there are four uh, ways in which we manage the patient depending upon the condition of the patient. If the patient had previous infant with the invasive GBS, okay, invasive, the word invasive is important, then in that case, we have to give IAP, okay, uh, because if we look at the third point, there is some difference in that, okay, like in preterm labor, uh, we, we will offer uh, IAP if the patient had um, GBS, confirmed GBS. And then uh, if the patient had GBS carriage colonization identified in the previous pregnancy, okay, uh, then in that case, we have to explain the likelihood of GBS carriage in the current pregnancy. We can offer IAP or bacteriological testing three to five weeks prior to the expected delivery date, usually 35 to 37 weeks. Means it is not compulsory to give IAP, we can do bacteriological testing. In our, if that is a positive, then we can continue that, okay? Then uh, planning delivery, uh, in the same planning delivery, if the patient reaches to the term and there are two conditions, pre-labor rupture of membrane and in the labor. So what happens in the rupture of membrane? In, uh, if in case of the rupture of membrane, we have non-GBS car uh, carrier uh, detected, then we will give immediate IAP and induction as soon as reasonably uh, possible. If we have unknown or negative GBS status, we will not give IAP. Then if the patient is in labor, we have no risk factor for GBS, then we will not give the IAP, okay? But if the patient has got pyrexia, 38 degrees Celsius or higher, we will offer broad spectrum antibiotics, including antibiotics for prevention, preventing EO GBS. Then if we have GBS carriage colonization in the current pregnancy, that if that is detected, we will offer IAP. So basically, this algorithm is very important. This is taken from RCUG guideline about GBS. Now coming to the exam question. Exam question is that a 32 years old woman is brought into emergency department with one day history of the fever, Rikers, abdominal pain and heavy lochia. And she had an uncomplicated spontaneous vaginal delivery two days ago. On arrival, she has temperature of 39 degrees centigrade and heart rate of 143 beats per minute and blood pressure of 82 by 50 millimeter mercury and respiratory rate of 40 per minute. The following initial resuscitation, what is the most appropriate immediate management. Now, in this question, um, the word GBS is not uh, written, but the thing is that we have to manage the patient that we diagnose GBS as well, okay? So, we are giving the option like blood cultures and vaginal swabs, broad spectrum and, uh, IV antibiotics, evacuation of radiant productive conception, IV dopamine and IV immunoglobulin. Okay, the thing is that IV uh, dopamine, IV immunoglobulins, we should not go for that because the initial resuscitation has already been done. The patient is a little bit stable now. Um, now, next thing comes in our mind is that whether we should give away uh, we should go for evacuation, retain product of conception. No, that is heavy logia. She has got uh, some sort of infection. We have to treat that. Broad spectrum IV antibiotic. Yes, we have to give broad spectrum IV antibiotics. But before that, it is recommended, especially in the UK, that we have to uh, do blood cultures and vaginal swabs. After that, we can go for broad spectrum IV antibiotics. So let us see the answer. The answer is A. Explanation is that it is essential that blood cultures are taken initially, but IV antibiotics should be started immediately without waiting for the culture. However, if the woman does not respond to the initial antibiotics, the culture will be available to guide the clinical team. Antibiotics should be chosen to cover the common causes of peripheral sepsis, which are group A streptococcus, E. coli, 
Staphylococcus aureus and Staphylococcus pneumoniae. Okay, thank you so much. That was little bit description of the algorithm of GBS.